is the back story here. What explains what happened in the markets today and what is the truth about these allegations that the research agency is making about the Adani group? Siddharth Zarabi is our managing editor at Business Today. Siddharth, how do you ex explain what happened today to our viewers? Why has this report been taken in the manner it has that has virtually spooked the markets? What does it really say and what is the Adani response? In the simplest manner possible, Rajdeep, the way I would like to describe this is that this report is a bet against Asia's uh, richest man and the world's third uh, richest man. This is a bet by a firm which specializes in taking such bets and shorting stocks and therefore making its money. So that transactional aspect is very, very important. The second aspect um, of what this really is, and I want to quote Deepak Shinoy, who is one of India's respected capital market experts, and he says, this is one long report, some of it is wild, some of it is already known, and some of it requires you to go deeper. I can't comment on the truth of this yet, can't independently verify some of them, but it's going to be controversial, uh, and this is on his... Uh, uh, a thread on Twitter where he is already picking out several factual errors uh, in this report. And I'm reminded that the same thing had happened uh, uh, last year with another report. Now, without going into that, you asked me about why did the Adani Group stocks, seven of the listed entities and two others also cement companies react. Markets are driven by sentiment. They react to information that investors believe impact stocks. But look at another very, very significant aspect. The timing of the report from a market point of view, from a daily trading point of view, I would call is dubious and questionable because a 20,000 crore additional shares offering, a follow-on offer as it is called in market terminology, is a, is a large fundraising exercise and there could be an impact on that. However, as we have just pointed out, uh, big institutions have oversubscribed to the 6,000 crore that is available for them by putting in bids worth 9,000 crore. So if you were to look at it from the biggest institutions in the world, sovereign wealth funds, Indian institutions, uh, those who put in very, very large, substantial, multi-hundred crore, thousand crore bets into the stock markets, they, have they are intending to subscribe to this equity. So just suppose that collective wisdom versus one short seller's report and the debate is on. There are some 88 questions uh, and it is up to the Adani group uh, to respond to them. We have had one sort of initial response and I imagine in the days ahead, Rajdeep, uh, they might want to talk more about some of the specifics that have been mentioned in this report. But how will this, uh, you're saying they will want to speak about the specifics what does this do, though, for the Adani group? Because from time to time, there have been questions raised over the manner in which the group finds itself uh, uh, in, uh, in debt, ha has used debt to finance a number of its projects. Uh, Gautam Adani responded to some of those in an interview that he had done with us earlier uh, this month. But how does this play out? Does this in any way hit the credibility of the Adani group? Or do you believe this is a temporary blip? Uh, Rajdeep, there's another bit in this report, which, uh, and I have seen uh, several instances, not just in India and globally, uh, of, of activist shareholders and their activist reports, and it, it's, it's fair, that's how markets function. But this same report also puts out another statement, which according to me is uh, very, very significantly sort of um, uh, questionable in the sense that it gives out a specific uh, uh, recommendation. It says, there's an 85% downside. Now, you're a short seller. You are predicting uh, uh, the kind of downside that exists and then actually collating a lot of what has been published and already also dismissed in the court. So I am not holding this brief uh, for both of these entities. I have personally tried to reach out to Hindenburg. I am yet to hear from them. And the company, Adani Group in question, has given mm -hmm. out a statement, a video and a text statement. I would say that we need to perhaps look at some of the fundamental questions that have been raised. And like I told you, I started by pointing out a, a real live example rather mm -hmm. than just giving some personal gyan of people who are experts in this subject who are already 
you know, dissecting some of these mm -hmm. claims. Uh, in terms of debt, that's a valid point. Uh, large over leveraged uh, firms cause nervousness in the markets. It doesn't relate to one particular group. It's a global phenomenon. In this case, the final point I want to tell you, Rajdeep, if there is 2 lakh crore uh, plus of uh, debt that this group has spread across its massive uh, business, 20,000 crore is being raised in terms of equity. So look at it this way, almost a 10% debt reduction that will happen by the end of this month. So this is this is an ever-changing situation. Uh, all businesses run with debt. It's cash flows that determine your ability to repay just as individuals like me or you have to uh, uh, pay back their monthly EMIs from their earnings. If you don't earn, you are not able to pay. So those are other questions which, I mean, frankly, I don't think can be answered um, uh, uh, just like this basis, one singular report, Raj. Well, we'll have to keep a watch, therefore, very carefully as to how the Adani group plans to respond beyond just the statement that they've made today. Uh, and the markets in particular will be closely watching uh, what the Adani group does and how they respond to some of these charges that have been made. Siddharth Zarabi, for making sense of the issue, appreciate your joining us. Thank you so much.